it's this rolling rotation that's kind of taken hold. Rather than have the S&P 500 itself go down 5 to 10 percent, it's kind of grinding sideways to slash higher. In early March, you had a greater than 10 percent drop in the Nasdaq and the semis. As of last Wednesday, you had less than 10 percent of the Russell 2000 above their own 10-day moving average. And the, and the banks were the KBW Bank Stock Index from intraday peak to trough was down almost 10 percent from the prior week. So we're getting this rolling rotation and this interest rate uncertainty that's probably going to continue for a little while. You, you made a decent call on, on the banks, Tony, and uh, suggested people should, should take some profits there. Are you still of that mindset, or do you think it's now a buying opportunity? Have you flipped at all? No, I, think it, I think they should be equal weight. The, 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 I don't make these changes easily, right, because people make a move, and I'm not a trader. I'm the worst trader. Um, what I'm pretty good at is at risk-reward, and what we found, Wilfred, was that the rise in the 10-year note yield, on the 10-day rate of change or 10-week rate of change had gotten so extreme that most extreme in history. And when that's happened in the past, it's led to a period of, of lower relative performance. Not a, not a crushing, not that banks get blasted, not a bear market, just that they have lesser relative outperformance. If you remember last summertime when, you know, I was hoping we'd be back on set by then, but we talked about the banks and tanks or the banks and the industrials in late May. That's the best performing sector since then are the are the financials and industrials. And just given that rise in the tenure, I think it was it, it, history suggests that you just want to take a little bit off the table for now. So the fact that, Tony, um, we're expecting President Biden to unveil this multi-trillion dollar infrastructure package later this week and then next month, um, another spending package in the trillions potentially as well. What does that do to this entire to this entire discussion to continue to see, I guess, more stimulus in, in some form or fashion potentially poised to go out into the market? It's a great question, Morgan. There's three levels of stimulus. Everybody knows the two of them. They know the monetary, obviously the Fed. They know the fiscal stimulus, obviously these packages we're talking about. But they don't talk about the interest rate stimulus. And the interest rate stimulus is the lower yield on corporate debt and household debt allows for increased spending. But the, here's a, this blew me away today. Um, Ned Davis showed, uh, sent a chart out that showed that the U.S. is lag at 25% Fiscal stimulus relative to GDP is lagging be behind Germany, France, and especially Japan. We're just catching up to what those three countries are doing by increasing the stimulus when it's all said and done. What happens where you want to be really negative and bearish is when you have a need for money to grow and limited or no access to it. Even with the higher rates, we have a historic level of excess liquidity. So you get these gyrations. Every second year was 2004 after the 2003 recovery. It was 2000, first half of 2010 after the 2009 recovery. You get this choppiness around interest rates where you, you, know, you don't have to just make a trade on the next 10 minutes, especially given some of the stuff in the background over the last couple of days. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.